Welcome to the Q&A of the documentary, River Silence. My name is Florencia Choto. I'm one, one of the programmers of the festival. And joining us today is Ro Rogerio Suarez, the director of the film. Thank you so much. <laughs> Thanks for opening this space for a q and I'm very happy to be here. It's a lovely occasion to talk about this film that's been kind of part of my life for so long. So thank you. Yes. So yeah, the first question would be, how did you come about this project? Okay, you know, when we make documentaries, it's a kind of uh, a very personal process, you know. Um, I live in Canada. You can see I live in Montreal and look, this is like, this is very, still very cold. Uh, but I go to Brazil a lot and all my films are shot in Brazil. I've made quite a few other documentaries before and the Amazon, it's kind of my place the place that I that I belong, basically. Um, so I've been to this to this specific region where the film was shot uh, about seven, eight years ago, um, shooting a documentary for Al Jazeera. Uh, and then I started kind of meeting people and uh, I decided to make like a base in the city of Altamira because there is so much going on there right now. And that's how slowly I came across these people, which later became my friends and now a part of my family. So, you know, uh, it's, um, uh, I would say that it's like I slowly uh, was invited into their lives and uh, slowly we started talking about filming and uh, kind of exchanging, you know, our experiences basically, because there is a lot of their experiences as well into mine. Yeah, I think that was going to be my next question was how did you select your subjects? And also, I guess it shows that you met, you had met them before because they are you are able to film very intimate moments, yes. very touching moments, like when Francinetta's uh, grandson dies, that uh, just a filmmaker that barely knew them wouldn't have had access to. No. No. It's funny that you mentioned that scene because it's very emblematic to me. Uh, I, I was shooting Raimunda, the other character, very far, you know, uh, by the river with no cell phones. And we're crossing the river, going to another location when by chance we crossed a path where the phones could actually work. And that's uh, exactly the moment when I uh, got the news of the baby's death. And uh, I said, stop everything, let's go. But when I said, stop everything, let's go and see Francinetti, I was, you know, basically saying, let's give her support. I never thought about filming and uh, the whole process, like the afternoon, the evening, and then the, mo the following morning, I was there with my team, not recording because I felt that it's like I, I, I shouldn't do it and uh, I didn't want to do it. I, I wanted to be there uh, for her and for her daughter. And uh, at one moment, that's the magic of, you know, trust. She looks at me and she says, aren't you going to film? That's when I realized that I had the permission to do it. Uh, but until that kind of, you know, relationship, it's kind of carved out, you obviously need to be uh, close to your characters for a long time. So I was with them for nearly five years. And uh, because we didn't have money to shoot this film at the beginning, we're doing like development. I would go and stay like three months without a camera, without nothing, just being part of their lives. And then my crew would arrive for like a week shooting. Uh, this is how we did it basically. Um, so, you know, when, when I say that they're part of my family, it's because we shared like a lot more that it's on screen. Uh, and I think it's like by, you know, by the way we were kind of, you know, uh, uh, bonded together, uh, that type of film could be made because there was not only trust, but friendship. And also it's like I became invisible in a way because I was there all the time. Um, I found them by just, you know, uh, observing and um, talking and visiting people and uh, um, imagining that those stories were beautiful stories that would kind of uh, be nice to put them together and uh, 
um, not creating much expectations about, you know, filming and anything like that. So we started very slowly, very, very slowly. And after five years, I think it's kind of, uh, we, we, you know, we, we, we came to an understanding of each other through the lenses that was very transparent. I would say it's magic when you actually have the time to do this, you know. And like geographically, how close were they to each other? Oh, very uh, close. You said yeah. Raimunda was a little further yeah. and also yeah. she seems to have been a little better off than the rest. Mm. But uh, with like Carly Ann and, um, and Franginette, they, they, they were, I, I, don't, I don't know how close they were to, to Altamira, for example. And, and Tamaquet as well. They all lived by the river. They all lost their homes because of the dam. They were all relocated to different areas in the city, but they are all on a radius of maybe five kilometers from each other. Uh, so they all basically environmental, uh, you know, victims. Uh, and in the case of Raimunda, uh, it's hard to say. I don't think it's like, you know, she's a poor woman, but uh, she's very resourceful. She's the get goer. She's the one that gets things done. So uh, with her, um, I think like her situation, she's still like, uh, depending on, you know, retirement from her husband, which is nothing's like maybe $300 a month and they're surviving on that. But she has the spirit of, you know, this woman that is able to transform things. She's like a magician. So it co she comes across as, as kind of wealthier, but, you know, everything that she got was like due to hard work and, uh, the way she she managed to bring people into you know her life her house for instance at the end of the film the wooden house she told them that those the, the wood that she used was like 50 years old and belonged to another house that she had so you know she kept it and then she brought it over to the new property and slowly they they built that home but she built that you know out of her own history because every single piece of timber or wood that you have there belonged to one or two houses that she had before that she kept carrying along with her, you know, and nurturing it basically as something very precious. It's very symbolic, I think. Yeah. And have you been able to keep in touch with them, especially oh, now yes. during COVID? Oh, yes, yes. Uh, this week I spoke to all of them, you know, because as I said, it's like, it goes beyond the kind of typical director, uh, subject matter kind of situation, you know. Um, I really feel that it's like we're a big family right now and I keep in touch very often. So I spoke to Raimunda this week, she's by the river uh, with João, her husband. They kind of uh, self-isolating uh, themselves, so, because he's, you know, he's, he's, he's quite sick and he's, 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 he has a lot of health issues, although that is not in the film, but, you know. Uh, so they really trying to protect themselves. Um, Carliani, she had COVID. One of her kids had COVID as well, but they had the mild COVID. They are selling food on the streets and they, they trying to build a house right now because they lost their home, right? So right now they are building themselves very slowly, brick by brick, their own home. Um, Tamaquera had a sixth child. Yeah, there, that there was, was finally, the, the yeah. The fifth one was born during the film. Filming, yes, yeah. and then there is the sixth, the sixth one right now, which is a boy mm -hmm. uh, with something that they wanted very much. Um, they still pretty much like having a life that is really, really hard. You know, indigenous people in the city, away from their culture, away from their communities, always a big problem. And I think that's very visible there, you know, in their story. And Francine Neche, I also spoke to her this week. Uh, she's fine, she's, she, she's doing well. Uh, her daughter, unfortunately, uh, has gone through a difficult path and uh, she, she's now a sex worker, you know, and she's having a pretty rough life at the moment. Uh, but she's doing, you know, she's doing what she can as a mom. She loves her daughter and she's being very supportive and she's being really, you know, um, 
trying as much as she can to take care of her. Um, and uh, yes, I mean, we, we kind of, you know, every now and then, and I'm going now in September and I'm meeting all of them again. So they are part of my life in that sense. Yeah, yeah. Um, I wanted to ask you about the cinematography. The, the film is gorgeous. And I wanted to know how you, because you make daily life look beautiful. And um, I wanted to, 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 for you to tell us how, you, how did you work with your two cinematographers to achieve it? Okay, uh, I think my understanding of cinema, especially documentary and especially on the situation uh, that we found these families, uh, abject poverty, uh, loss of their homes, loss of their culture, you know. Um, I wanted to do something different. Um, I didn't want to do the typical investigation that you have, like, you know, very structured storytelling to tell that type of story, uh, which is very common, you know, and important that people bring formats. They are like, I think they are very well-known traditionally. I wanted to bring something that's, in a way, symbolically, could make, could bring the beauty of their lives out of that first impression that you have, which is suffering and poverty. And I knew that two things had to be done. One, it's the kind of approach to the character, bringing the best that they can give to you and that they can offer to people uh, of their souls and of their feelings, you know? So it's working with the characters. Uh, and also working with the photography in an intimate level that it's like that they allow themselves to do the beautiful things that they do or to feel sad if they, are, if they feel sad or, you know, to celebrate if they want to in a way that it's like that we are really, really not representing, but we're part of it. Uh, so I started working with uh, Aldo Viedo, my first cinematographer from Chile, Chile and uh, he was able to do most of the shooting with me. And uh, Aldo has this great connection with people and, you know, he works with like the Mapucho, Mapuche uh, indigenous questions in Chile. And he's, you know, he's a great kind of camera and uh, mm -hmm. documentary maker himself. So uh, one of the things is we fell in love with the whole story, with the images, with the light, uh, with the beauty, with the people. So we started building the poetics of the film based on this kind of really, really beautiful moments of kind of admira admiration for, for them and the lives that they had. Uh, and then with Glauco Bermudez, he's from Mexico and he was my last DOP. He was with me on my last trip, which was the longest one. We were there for 32 days. Uh, then I had something in mind that was like, I had already seen the footage from development and I wanted to kind of, to bring, you know, the power, the beauty, the poetry uh, and, to close the stories of these people in a way that would be an experience rather than just a film that you see, um, inviting people to be part of that experience. But none of this would be able to be done uh, if, he, if we were not able to show the love and care that these people have for their families and for each other. And I think that's the pinnacle, that's the most important thing. A camera can do beautiful shots, but that level of emotion you can only bring when you really, really can, um, uh, for the audiences, you know, bring the best out of your characters. And I think the best that they can offer, and this is like what is really beautiful about this film, by the way, this is the tw 20th film festival that we're part of because the film has been traveled quite a lot. And it's like, the, 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 I think the most beautiful message that we get is like, there is so much love, you know? And I think we built on that love basically to get the images that we wanted. That is great. I mean, technically it's, it's all just amazing. The editing, the sound design, but um, we're running out of time and I still want to ask you if you have any upcoming projects. I do actually, yes. Yeah. Uh, you know, parallel to that film, because I, I was like traveling in the region and staying there for so long, I started recording uh, a family that it's not part of River Silence because it's too different. They live in the jungle. It's husband, wife, and 10 kids, uh, two girls and eight boys. 
and I'm following their lives for six years now. And that's my next film. It's the kind of uh, the experience of being with a family in the forest, uh, following the growing up of their kids, basically. And the arrival of internet, telephone, roads, and the erosion of, you know, the environment around them and the pressure that they've, you know, that they're facing. So this is my upcoming project. Uh, it's shot like on a place that it's like 200 kilometers away from where I shot River Silence. And you see, that's the kind of thing that when you fell in love with a place, you realize that every single person has a story to be told. So I'm just kind of keeping, you know, uh, uh, basically my eyes and, you know, my intentions into that region and building up another film that hopefully we're going to be able to share with, you know, the audiences uh, in Texas in a couple of years time as well. You know. We look forward to it. Thank you. Lovely. Yes. Well, that is all the time we have. And on behalf of Cine Las Americas, I wanted to thank you, Rogerio, for your beautiful and insightful documentary. And also, I would like to remind the, our audience that uh, they will be receiving an email where they can vote for the audience award at the end of the festival. So vote. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. It's a pleasure to be with Cine Las Americas and uh, yes, uh, enjoy all the films, all the selection, you know, films are very important in our lives, especially right now in times of COVID, you know, it's, uh, it's an experience that we can take to another level. So thank you so much for opening the space and uh, goodbye, everybody. Goodbye. Thank you. Thank you.